You know, one day at a time, market your business, focus on it, focus on the end goal, and most importantly, set goals. This is Wedding DJ School. I'm Josh Mitchell, your guide to the business of a wedding DJ. We're talking with leaders in the wedding entertainment industry. You're going to learn their backstories, how they got started, and where they are today. Ken Murphy is joining us today from Chicago. Ken never thought he would be a full-time DJ. He got into the industry because of a bet with his uncle. He's grown a fantastic business with several DJs on his team and they deliver a high quality service to their clients. Today, we're gonna hear Ken's backstory and you're gonna learn the importance of thinking about return on investment or ROI when purchasing equipment. You're gonna hear about setting clear and specific goals so that you can achieve results. We're gonna talk about branding yourself with professionalism in everything that you do and you'll hear how Ken designed a custom welcome gift to set the tone in his relationship with his clients. Today's show is packed with so much actionable advice. You're gonna be able to put this into use in your life right away today after listening. So I hope that you enjoy it. Here's Ken Murphy. So I'm Ken Murphy with Amp Event Professionals and we specialize in DJ, photo booth, and event lighting for all kinds of events throughout the Chicagoland area. And uh, I have two dogs. I've been in business for about 15 years or so and um, got a wife, no kids, but uh, yeah, yeah, so that's about it. Awesome, so take me back to the very beginning um, when DJing started coming on your radar. Tell us about where, you, where it all began for you. Okay, so um, it started when I was 13 years old when I lost the bet to my uncle who owned a DJ company at the time. It was called Shaitan Entertainment. And um, if I would've won the bet, I would've went to OzFest since I lost. I ended up working for him for two days. And remember, this is 13 now, so, you know. Um, but uh, he was also my godfather, so he wanted to help me out. So I ended up working for him. And uh, from there, I evolved to doing some, you know, eighth grade graduation parties and that kind of thing. And then at 16, I was like, you know what, I'm going to start my own thing. So I went out, bought my own equipment. Um, my parents were fortunate enough to lend me the money. And um, but within a year, I paid them all back. And uh, the rest is history. And here I am. Uh, that was in 2001 that all started when I was 13. And, you know, here we are 18 years later, still doing it and doing it full time and rocking weddings and all that good stuff. That's fantastic. Before we move on and talk about weddings, I wanted to just hear a little bit more about, um, you know, those early days when you needed equipment. You mentioned that you went to your parents. Tell me a little bit about how that conversation went, because I think that most people are similar in that, you know, you don't have all the money to get the equipment. And, and at the beginning of your journey, you're wondering, how do I get into this? How do I get started? So tell us a little bit about how you were able to obtain that equipment. Unpack that for us. Sure. So um, my mom actually approached me. She knew I had a passion for music my whole life. And she actually came up to me and said, you know, um, you know, it's, you're 16 now. It's time to get a job. And, uh, you know, I looked at Dairy Queen and stuff like that. And, you know, I was kind of late to it. You know, like, you know, once that once that threshold hits, when the summertime comes, you know, you kind of miss out on it. And, you know, there's no jobs available for 16 year olds. So she approached me and said, hey, do you want to, uh, you know, get some DJ gear? And I said, let me think about it for a couple of days before we dive into this. And let me do some pricing and stuff like that. And then from there, it was, uh, you know, kind of just rolled, rolled with it. And my cousin who owned the DJ company with my uncle uh, also worked at a DJ gear store in Mount Prospect, Illinois, which was by my house. So he actually hooked me up with my first set of gear, as well as my mom helping me out with the, you know, and my dad, obviously, too, and them supporting me through it all. So a huge thing is the support. Awesome. Yeah. So you had an ambition or you had this passion and your mom was able to see it. And that's kind of how you 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 got to where you are today it wouldn't have happened without that other people kind of seeing it in you. Um, that's, that's incredible. And, uh, so let's, let's go to your first wedding. Let's go to when that happened. How old were you? How did you get that wedding? And what was it like? Um, well, it was, uh, the first wedding I did was in Arlington Heights, which is where I lived at the time. Um, I was 16 years old. It was right after I had bought my gear. I think it was that September, that October. And um, I was at a country club by the house, and I worked with a band for my first wedding, which was, you know, interesting. I, I haven't worked with a band since, honestly. And, um, you know, not that I'm against it, but, you know, it just hasn't happened. Um, so, and I don't really recall about how I ended up booking that event. I know I did, like, Yellow Pages. I was in the Yellow Pages, like, right off the bat, because, um, you know, you had to start, you know, get that ROI going right away. So, um, yeah, that was about it, and it went off pretty good. Um, I'm sure 
it was a mess at times because that's kind of what, you know, was going on, you know, being that age and doing your first wedding. But um, I did have another DJ help me out before I did that wedding and I had a meeting with him and he walked me through his paperwork, what to say, what not to say, how the flow of the night goes, he gave me an example timeline. So um, I was fortunate enough to get that help from him. So that was pretty, that was pretty awesome. But without that, I don't know where I would have started or any of that stuff. So, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, I just want to extract a couple things, particularly for for those that are on the beginning part of their journey. Couple key takeaways, even from uh, from that right there. First, you mentioned ROI, which stands for return on investment. So, if you're just getting into the game and you've never heard that before, that's something that's really huge for DJs. Tell me a little about what you what you mean, what you meant by that when you wanted your ROI by getting your name in uh, the yellow pages. Tell us about that. Sure. So first of all, um, it wasn't my money. Like I was saying, it was my parents' money and I wanted to pay them back as quickly as possible. Um, so you know how that goes. But uh, anyway, um, I went to, um, I wanted to just make sure that I was getting that money back right away. So I went and took out a yellow page ad, you know, put it all in there and everything. And uh, it was a smaller ad, but uh, you know, it started getting calls on it fairly quickly. And um, from there, you know, Yellow Page is obviously out at this point, you know, nobody uses that anymore. But um, at the time, that's what it was huge because um, websites were, you know, mediocre at best, like really mediocre. And, um, you know, that wasn't really the way to reach out to clients at the time. So that's when we ended up going the Yellow Pages route and then getting that, uh, getting that money in right away is super important. So you buy the gear, you figure out how many events you need to pay off the gear. And from there, you just, uh, you know, market and promote and help yourself out as much as possible so I love that. Yeah. And I think it's just, it's a huge takeaway for beginners and people that are looking to get into this. If you have an ambition and you have a passion and you want to make it happen, one of the trends that you see for high performing DJs, the people that are doing the best of the best businesses, they didn't start off owning all that equipment. They didn't start off with all that stuff. If you take a look at the kind of events that Ken's doing, you might be discouraged and think, I have no idea how I'm ever going to do that. But listen to, to where, you know, you started that. That's incredible. Um, and that idea of you got to be able to pay it off. You've got to be able to pay back the money that you agreed to pay back, whether that's to your parents or whether it's to a bank or a credit card, you cannot have a profitable business if that mindset of, you know, ROI and making sure that you pay off your debts, whether it's personal or whatever, um, is in you. So I love that from uh, early mindset, you already had kind of that business drive and some of those key principles. What other kind of, you know, as early, like in your early days, what were some more of those kind of foundational things for you that uh, allowed you to be set up for success? Sure, sure. And I want to mention one other thing too. When I was 16 and 13 or whatever, you know, um, I did ne I never saw myself as doing this full time. And, you know, I just, I, I know you just mentioned, you know, younger DJs and stuff, seeing the stuff that I do and the scale that I do. And um, I'm not, I'm on a larger scale, but I'm not even on like the largest scale of the industry, you know? So, but when I was 16 years old, I was like, there's no way I'm ever going to make, you know, a living at this. This is just like a temporary thing, you know, like get the girls, you know, do the clubs, that kind of thing. And, you know, do some private parties, whatever, house parties. But um, really what it came down to was just one day at a time, you know, one day at a time, market your business, focus on it, focus on the end goal, and most importantly, set goals. So um, I wanted to throw that out there for sure. And um, just making sure that, you know, the end goal is in sight, first of all, like always in sight of what you're looking for and uh, being able to meet that and, you know, strategic planning and just making sure it happens and obviously having fun with it. I mean, you got to you definitely got to make sure you're um, you're enjoying yourself as much as possible, you know, and, you know, people say like, oh, you're in a party, you know, thing all the time. But I mean, you're running a business, you know, it's, you're running a business at the same time. And, you know, in the younger years, I didn't see it as running a business, but, you know, um, now it obviously is and it's my livelihood. So um, it's pretty sweet. So don't get discouraged out there is all I'm trying to say, you know, so. Awesome. So tell me when you were 21, I think you mentioned in uh, one of your videos that you had lost your job and you were considering going into marketing and kind of taking a job like that. Um, tell us about that and tell us about how you made the decision and, and your conversation with your dad. I just think that's such a great story and um, love for you to share that with us. Sure. So once again, I was really fortunate to have both my parents um, really, you know, support me all the way through this. And uh, my dad, you know, wanted me to go to college and stuff like that. And I ended up going for a few classes. But, you know, that was really as far as it went. because School just wasn't for me. So um, the whole thing was all my friends were going to school and graduating and stuff. And they were all starting at, you know, 50, 60K a year jobs. And I wanted that. 
you know, but I was only doing, you know, less than 30 at the time, you know, um, and that was part time with DJing. And then also I was doing a full time job building police cars. And that's where I lost my job. And I approached my dad and said, hey, look, um, I got applied for some marketing positions. Um, I went for three interviews. I got two of them offers on two of them. And I think I'm going to sell them my DJ gear. And he's like, well, why don't you just market your own company? And I'm like, uh, well, that's not going to give me 50 K a year now. And he's like, no, but you know, you'll have to see where it goes or whatever. And, you know, actually a year later I bought my first house and, um, you know, it was just, it was just from there, it was just a snowball and everything and, uh, making sure I had the bookings to support myself. Um, you know, and my girlfriend at the time was now my wife and having that support on her end as well was really important. But, um, yeah, that was the turning point really is what it came down to was either, I go and get another part-time job or I go full-time into something else and I end up selling my DJ gear and that's really what it came down to. And, you know, my dad just said, nope, just keep doing what you're doing. So it was pretty, uh, it was awesome. Yeah. And I think that, you know, those of us that are, that are in this business, you need people that are surrounding you, whether they're your parents or whether they're other voices, you know, not everybody has parents that are encouraging. I was fortunate like you can to have uh, parents that were encouraging in my journey. Um, but I would just say for anybody else out there, like notice that the trend isn't just that it was our parents, but having voices in your life of people that can encourage you and take you to the next level, you would have never can gone to that level without the support and the direction of other people and that's just that's just what happens for for those that are achieving and those that are going to the next level they have people in their life. So if you don't have somebody in your life right now, look for it. When you start looking for something and you start saying, man, who can I find that can help me journey? Look in the Facebook groups, look in, in your neighborhood, look in your community and see if you can find somebody because it really is important uh, to kind of have that that support group. And I love hearing that from you. Um, and Ken, I know that you, um, what's important to you is really great customer service, going to the next level, not just settling for the bare minimum. Tell me about your philosophy of just excellence and how you approach your work? Sure. So when I first started the business, I heard a lot of horror stories about DJs and what they do and the way they act and stuff like that. And, you know, I hear more of it now than I even did then. But at an early age, I was like, I don't want to be that guy. I'm going to show up wearing a polo, dress pants, dress shoes when I set up for the wedding or any private event whatsoever. You'll never catch me in a t-shirt, a hat like I'm wearing right now. You'll never see me in that. Um, I'm always you know, trying to be professional across the board because once you brand yourself and you brand yourself with that professionalism, like it's so important that you stick with it throughout all your marketing, you stick with it throughout your appearance, you stick out with um, with your presentation even. Like everything you're doing is like really important to really just step it up and make sure it's all there. So that philosophy really just came from standing out from all the other um, I shouldn't say all the other DJs, but you know, a lot of the other DJs in our market and I live in Chicago, saturated market with DJs and there's good, bad and ugly here. You know what I mean? So, and there's great too. So, but, um, just really separating myself from everybody else is really what it came down to with that, uh, the customer service side of things. And by the way, I hear from clients all the time. Like I, I talked to a client yesterday, I booked a wedding yesterday because we sent back and forth about seven emails yesterday. She said, wow, all the other DJs I reached out to were three, four days, even one was two weeks out. And I was like, no, that's not how we work it because you know, it's, it signs contracts and that's really the end goal. So, and you want the customer experience as well. So it's going to give you the better reviews in the end also. Yeah, and I want to go back to earlier, you even mentioned that the importance of having a great website and having a great online presence, you know, the yellow pages were uh, important at one period of time. And today, people don't really look at those the way they used to. Um, so they look at websites, they look at your uh, social media profiles. So um, you've got to look the part in your physicality and what you wear and how you set up your equipment and making sure your cables look nice or, you know, having the appropriate, you know, coverage to make sure that your setup looks really nice. But personally, you also have to do that. Um, in, in the physical world, but also the digital world. Tell me about just how you've, in your journey, you have a great website, you have a great online presence. Tell me about your thinking behind that and encouragement to other people um, about why that's why that's so important. Sure, sure. Um, and I also want to mention up until uh, June of this year, is actually I did all my own web stuff, um, all my own website and everything. And then um, I finally got a chance to hire somebody and I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna go for it and make it happen. So that was a game changer. Um, my website was always professional looking. It was just, it looked like everybody else's. So, and the big thing again is standing out from the competition that's in your area because 
Nowadays, you'll realize everybody's a DJ, so you know you got to really try to set your part from everyone else. And the social media side of things, um, you know, the images and stuff like that. I go to a lot of DJ conferences and um, that kind of thing. So everybody talks about when you're doing this online presence, your photos have to look good. Like, don't be using you know an iPhone four or six or whatever to shoot these photos and then post them on your website. It's going to look grainy. It's not going to look great. Um, invest yourself in you know, and you don't have to do this right away, of course. But you know, any phone, most phones nowadays that have been developed in the last two years have very good cameras on them. So um, you want to make everything look professional across the board, everything clear. And the big thing is conveying your branding all throughout the whole process. So the whole customer process from the moment they go to your social media, from the moment they go to your website, you know, from there, your email, everything else, um, you know, all that stuff is really important. And even like on my email signature, I have a professional photo, I have a picture of myself, you know, I have like, you know, social media following all that stuff. And it's all professional looking and it's all you know, branded the same way across the board. Everything is this cyan behind me, the cyan blue color. Um, so it's really just, uh, you know, and I learned, I learned a lot of that at the, uh, the DJ conferences that I went to as well. So. So awesome. You've, you've always been investing in your business, not just working inside of it, but working on the business. So you've, uh, you've taken the time to zoom out and not just DJ all the time, but also to carve out some time to, to work on these things, something as simple as an email signature or your presence um, on these different sites. So how, how have you been able to carve out that time just in terms of your discipline or time management? How would you encourage somebody who hasn't done any of that kind of stuff? Like, And they're thinking, I've got to plan the next event or I've, I'm still working on another job right now, what would you say to them? Because we know it's so important to do those things, but what advice would you give to somebody who just needs, needs to be able to carve out that time? Right, right. Um, really what it comes down to is just making a to-do list and checking things off. Um, when I write my to-do list, I put the, you know, whatever the, whatever I need to do on there, I put the date next to it of the day that I wrote it down so that I know in two weeks, if it's not done on my to-do list, something needs to happen with that. And that's like first priority. So, um, that, that to start off with secondly, is just having the time during the day and not having necessarily, um, you know, a full-time job because, I did the full-time thing and I ran the business at the same time and it was rough. You know what I mean? It's like really, it's really hard, especially having a social life on top of that. And um, having a social life, just being a DJ alone is, is, a, is a big challenge sometimes. So, um, but really delegating your time and figuring out what you need to do. And again, like for me, it works for me is making the notes. Um, I also have a mirror in my office. Sometimes I'll just jot notes on that. So then when I'm leaving the room, I can see it and be like, oh, okay, I got to get that done today. You know, like those kinds of things. So just making sure that you're constantly, you know what they always say, out of sight, out of mind. You want to make sure it's in sight and in mind all the time, your business. So, and I shouldn't say all the time, but when appropriate, of course. Yeah, and it's just it's really good to to be organized and you're not going to be able to grow and really go to that next level and have a really great business if you're not taking the time to set those goals, set your priorities, follow up with the commitments that you've decided to make because things that that you're talking about here are important like marketing and your presence and the way that things look. These aren't things that you can afford if, if you want to make it in this business and you want to be great and you want to be able to go to the next level. Um, it's it's a combination of a ton of things and you can't ignore some of those especially in today's world with email and those response times. I just I love that you've prioritized that um, that essence of you know, being timely and, and getting back to people right away. That's expected. And, and people are, are excited. I remember um, a couple years ago, my wife and I got married, uh, 2016. And when we were reaching out to vendors, we were, we were like, what if they reply tonight? And a couple of them did. So to know that you can give that gift to people is incredible because they, they are likely sitting there on their couch or on their kitchen table and they're wondering, oh, I wonder if this vendor is going to get back to me. So I, I love that you delight them in that way. What, what other ways do you delight people or, or kind of go that extra mile um, that's unique to you? Oh, boy. Um, well, I do a few things. Um, so from the initial contact, when I, if I get a chance to do a face-to-face -face with the client and actually sit down at their home um, or Starbucks or whatever, um, I give them at the end of our meeting, I give them a day of wedding kit. So what that is inside of there, there's a shot glass, there's a uh, pen, there's a, um, you know, everything is branded by the way. Um, there's Advil in there. There's all kinds of things, you know, breath, uh, breath mints, all kinds of cool stuff. And everything is branded with the Amp Event Professionals logo on it. So that's one thing I do. So that way, like if you gift 
something to a potential client, they're more likely to go with your services because you gifted something to them. So psychologically, they're thinking, well, you know, he gave me something, so I got to give him something. You know what I mean? So um, that's a great tip. And other things that I do the day of the wedding, um, I do the they call it the Randy Bartlett finale. If for those of you that haven't looked it up or haven't heard of it, look up Randy Bartlett. Um, he does some amazing things with voiceovers. And um, what I do is I record all their toasts and record all their speeches and record their vows and everything, the client and you know the bride and that kind of thing the day of. And then during dinner, I edit it all down. I take that first dance song and I take their first dance or you know a slow dance or whatever the case is. And for the last song of the evening, I'm gonna play back the song that I edited during dinner with a snippet of their vows. And I mean a snippet, I mean like, you know, 10 seconds of the speeches, you know what I mean? Like 10 seconds for the maid of honor speech, 10 seconds for the best man. So, and I play this back for them at the end of the night. They don't know this is happening. So they get all in a circle, their guests around, get around them in the circle. And they think they're just dancing to their first dance again or a slow song. And then all of a sudden their vows come over and the bride's vows. And all of a sudden they just look around like, oh my God, what's happening? So those are the kind of things that I do next level. And then to get the reviews at the end, um, you know, to get those reviews, because we have over 355 star reviews across the web, um, a way to do that is actually go and giving something to the bride and groom after the date. So for me, I give them the Ken Murphy finale that I was just talking about. For you, if you have a photo and you have a good camera and you have a nice photo of them at the end of the night or at any point, shoot them an email, give it to them, give, give them some review links, you know, so you're giving them something, they're gonna be that much more likely to do it and you gotta do it either the night of the event, when you get home at 2, 3 a.m., whatever the case is, if you do it then, they're gonna wake up the next morning. What's the first thing the bride and groom do when they, go, when they wake up? They go to breakfast with their guests, they sit down, and all their guests are raving about their wedding and everything else. So if you do those things, um, they're gonna get back to their hotel room and they're gonna say, oh wow, you know, like he gave us this picture, or he gave us his MP3, or whatever, and they're more likely to write that review. And, cause that's, that's when the emotion is strongest too. You wanna do it like within the first 24 hours. So they don't always write a review, but most of the time, uh, most of the time they do. So, yeah. And in today's age, reviews are everything. So you need to collect those testimonials. You need to collect that feedback from people. And to do that, you have to ask for it. You can't just kind of wait around and hope that they do it. Hope is not a strategy. So you've got to ask and it has to be an intentional and it has to be a part of your business system so that at every wedding from the moment that, you know, they contact you all the way until really the event is over and the things that happen afterwards, all of that is part of the system. And I just, I love hearing uh, from successful people like you that have a complete system and you're still, you know, like, like I, I feel like for people at the beginning of their journey, they don't realize that even those things after the event are part of the job. Um, so what are some other things that just over the years you've realized are, are you know, when, when you first started thinking about weddings and, and this whole DJ industry um, and now after all this experience that you've had, all this success that you've had growing the business and you've got such incredible equipment and awesome stuff that you do, um, what are some other key takeaways? If you were to distill it down to just a couple, you know, key learnings or things that you would pass along to people, what are some things that you've learned over the years that are just so important in this industry to keep in mind? Um, so one thing is just professionalism. Be professionalism in every aspect of the business, from the emails to the day of the event, to your equipment, to everything. And I can't stress enough about also the equipment side of things. So cable management, guests see that. Don't have, you know, like don't put your stuff on a white tablecloth at a banquet hall and hang a have a bunch of cables hanging down the front, a bunch of black cables hanging down the front. Get yourself a front board facade, and put that up, you know, LEDs are great, you know, like that looks awesome. Um, and it covers up the equipment that the bride and groom aren't gonna want um, in that, in their first dance pictures and so on, you know what I mean? So that's huge. Um, other things, networking. Um, when you do an event, when you do a wedding, when you do a private event, you see a photographer, ask for the photographer's card um, right away. What I do is I go down, I get immediately go to my phone as soon as they hand me the card, type in their email, I send them an email. Hey, great working with you tonight. Um, that way, when they get into the office the next day or that evening or whatever the case is, um, they'll go and see that and they'll say, oh, wow, okay, you sent me an email already. And that way, you don't have to worry about losing the card because you already sent them an email. So later on, you know, you can revert back to that. Um, so those are, those are a couple things, um, again, the professionalism side of things and, uh, just treating people the way you want to be treated. Um, that's something I've always based my life off of. If you treat somebody the way you want to be treated, you're more than likely to get a great outcome. They're more than likely to refer you and they're just going to have that much more and they're going to enjoy working with you that much more. Those are fantastic tips. And, and if, for those that are listening right now, if you just 
press the pause button or take a couple quick notes and implement those three things in the next three weeks or the next, you know, whatever time frame, they're going to add value, immediate value to the way that you run your business. And these are things that are just, that they take action. They require, you have to act on these things and actually do these things. You might hear it and you go, oh yeah, of course, that sounds, that sounds obvious. It sounds pretty easy, but in practice, it's a lot harder and it takes time, it takes effort, it takes intentionality. So I love what you're saying, Ken, and I think that people need to take this advice and put it into action. Before we wrap up, I've got two questions for you. Um, The first question is kind of about your pet peeves and things that maybe rub you the wrong way. When you see a DJ do this, it makes you a little angry or that's something that you don't like. So what are some things that just, you know, that you could encourage others not to do that you've seen happen over the years? Um, Articulating your voice while speaking on the microphone. That's one of the things that's really important. Um, Don't get on the mic and just talk like this. All right, everybody, how are you doing today? It's not a eulogy, all right? We're at a celebration. We're trying to have a good time here. Um, so make sure you speak with a smile on your face. You know, if, if, you're, if you're speaking with a smile on your face, it's gonna come through the microphone, the guests are gonna see it, and that kind of thing. Um, be animated. Not over-animated, but be animated. Like, have a good time with it. Act like you're enjoying yourself when you're at the event. Like, that's just one thing that's just so, so important. Listen, I've heard songs, I Got a Feeling, you know, by the Black Eyed Peas. I've heard that song a thousand times, you know. Do I still have a smile on my face when I'm playing it? Do I still have a good time when I'm playing it? Absolutely. You just got to get creative with it and have a good time. Um, So that's one thing. Also, with the, um, you know, mixing and stuff like that, don't practice your mixing at events. Practice at home. Practice in your bedroom. Practice in your office. Nobody wants your shoes in a dryer when you don't know what you're doing up there. So, um, you know, and the sync button isn't always your friend either. So uh, make sure that you're practicing those kinds of things. And uh, the big thing is just the mic work. Make sure you're speaking on the mic with a smile on your face. You're enjoying yourself. You're happy to be there. Move your body around when you're playing the music. Just enjoy yourself while you're at the event because if you're enjoying yourself, the client and the guests are that much more likely to have a good time and then you're going to get more referrals and you're going to get a good job at the end of the night and that kind of thing and and read the crowd please djs read the crowd don't just get on there and just play a song and it, when it kills the dance floor it kills the vibe um, don't don't keep playing the song switch it up and get something else on because guests that's one one thing i hear from clients the most is we went to a wedding last weekend and the DJ sucked. He didn't have anybody on the dance floor. He played out the whole song when no one was dancing. So those things are key. So make sure you uh, make sure you hit them, hit them good with it. Hit them early. And one last thing too, get your photos. If you're going to take promotional photos and video, you want to do that in the first half an hour, 45 minutes of the event. The earlier the better. The first three or four songs when that dance floor is full. Do it then because that's when aunts, uncles, everybody's out there versus, you know, half an hour, an hour later where it's, you know, it may dwindle a little bit. The more your dance floor looks packed, the better. That is fantastic advice. I'm even like, I'm taking notes. I'm like, I I need to do some of this stuff soon. And it's, it's, you know, speaking on the microphone is something that uh, I do all the time um, in, in other avenues beyond DJing. And it's really important to develop that mic technique and to take the time to listen back. I think that's another tip that we can add to that list of listen back to your performance and, you know, record it on your phone or have somebody set it up off in the corner and watch yourself back. You might think it's painful. You might think it's boring, but why should somebody else have to suffer through your uh, lack of preparation? Um, if, if you can't, Sit back down, listen to the way that it went, and then learn from it. Learn how you can speak more clearly and articulate. That is fantastic advice, especially for those just starting off and being, you know, bringing that life to the party. People are going to feed off the energy. So what you said about that, about actually being excited to be there, even if you've heard the song for the 150th time, it's so important. So I love that. That that is such great advice. And it's a great reminder, even for people that do this all the time, that these are things that we you never stop having to re excite yourself and re kind of calibrate your mind before you do an event. So I think that's great advice. Um, what is one goal? This is my last question for you. Uh, what is one goal in your business? I know you're a little bit farther along, um, than, than people listening right now, but I'm curious just about what, what's something that you're working toward and this idea of, you know, we never kind of grow content and just say, okay, now we're done. I'm not going to improve my business anymore. So what are you doing right now? or, Or what are some things that you've been thinking about lately to either improve your business? or go to the next level in terms of service? I'm, I'm curious of what's something that you're working toward. Sure. Um, well, one thing I'm working toward is being able to 
support my family by myself. So, you know, like my wife and I hope to have kids one day. And one thing I'm working towards is she's a special education teacher right now. And I want her to be a stay at home mom. So I want to be able to support, you know, my family and everything on my own salary, you know, with insurance and all that stuff. So that's like my top goal at the moment. Um, second to that would be, um, uh, you know, getting my multi op at a bigger level. So right now um, I have five DJs that work under me and, um, you know, they're busy, as busy as they want to be, but, you know, I want to keep them busier and also, in addition to that, be able to hire more people on and hire more uh, professionals on with me. And with that comes an office space, um, you know, and those kinds of things too. So uh, there's a lot of things that I'm doing now, like um, I just built a, last year, about a year ago now, I built a TV DJ booth. Um, so that, that's been huge and just trying to up my setup all the time and those kinds of things and, uh, bring new experiences across the board with, you know, the equipment side of things and also the overall experience of the guests and the client at the end of the day, at the end of their, at, at the end of their event. So I'm doing a lot of interviews and stuff now too, with clients and, um, you know, telling stories and mo now it's. Now it's more of a story thing versus as before, it was like, you know, let's go and crush this wedding with, you know, the cocktail hour and then the, dan the you know, dinner and then the dancing side of it. And that was, that was great, but now I'm trying to take it next level and just bring really unique, fun experiences to my clients' uh, events. I love it. I love it. Any resources that you'd recommend for, uh, you know, whether it's a conference or other, other ways that you've learned? So um, I actually attended my first conference in 2017. I went to Midwest DJs Live in Milwaukee, uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and uh, I can't say enough great things about those guys and that whole uh, that whole conference itself. So if you're looking for a conference and you're in the Midwest or outside of the Midwest even, go to Midwest DJs Live. It's an absolutely unbelievable, you know, intimate conference. There's only about 120 to 150 attendees. And it's, uh, you know, everybody's good vibes and all that stuff too. Um, another one that I went to is Mobile Beat. That one was pretty good as well. Um, but I went there also for, you know, some workshops. I did a PhDJ workshop with Joe Bunn and Mike Walter. So um, I went there for that and just trying to take things. Well, when you see a conference in the area or, you know, you see an opportunity to take a microphone workshop or something like that, do it. Like any money that you put into, you know, your business and that kind of thing. Like that's, that's where you want to be. You want to be w surrounded by other professionals that are like-minded and you're going to learn things and you're not going to just learn things in the seminars. You're going to probably learn more sitting around the round table or having dinner with a DJ that you don't know or an MC you don't know and just, you know, picking his brain and seeing where he's gone and those kinds of things, just like we're doing right now. That's where you're going to get the most out of the conferences. So definitely check those, those couple out. I love it, Ken. You are just such an inspiration and hearing your story and how you got to where you are today is just, it has encouraged me so much. It makes me just excited because just seeing what you're doing is is so awesome. And I just, I love your humility and the fact that you you keep on learning and you keep finding ways to go to the next level. And I just, I want to be like that. I want to continue to kind of spread that. That is such a great, um, you know, quality to have. And I want others to model it as well. So if you're listening right now, check out Ken's stuff, check out his website, check out his, his, uh, videos and stuff that he has. He's a great model of somebody that you can look up to and really just, you know, he's doing such a great job with with his business and even trying to make it a bigger multi-op. And, you know, we're all on a journey together. Wherever you are in your journey, um, we're in this together. And I think the world needs more great DJs. And Ken is definitely one of those. So uh, thank you, Ken, for spending some time with us today. I really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it, Josh. You can find Ken over at AmpEventProfessionals.com. All of the links to his profiles will be in the description of this show. We don't want you to forget about us at Wedding DJ School. You can find us at WeddingDJSchool.com. You can also text Wedding DJ, all one word, to 44222. And if you send us your email address, we'll send you a comprehensive checklist, recommended resources to check out, advice on what to do with contracts, and so much more, all for free. Just text Wedding DJ to 44. Two two two. Well, next Friday, we're going to continue the conversation with top wedding DJs in the industry so that you can learn how to grow a successful business. We'll see you then.